Hi, my name is Irit Singh and I'm your lockdown chef, which means I would be preparing dishes and teaching you how to cook these items and keep you engaged in this period of lockdown. So my dish today is called Tingmo. It's a very unique bread, which is uh, the staple of Tibet or the area which is known as the roof of the world and also the adjoining areas dried down up to Sikkim. And uh, the first time I saw this bread, actually, my reaction was uh, to kacha hai because it looks raw and uncooked and almost white, which is very unlike our impression of a bread. So what I did was take a picture of my first Tingmo bread and put it on my social media page, asking my friends to identify what this thing was because it's such a unique bread. And trust me, very few people could actually get the name right. And the first of them who got it right was Tanu Dogra. So here's a shout out to you, Tanu. So for Tingmo, you need very few ingredients and essentially four or five ingredients. The first is maida. Uh, refined flour, white flour, not whole wheat flour, uh, this. Second is oil, sugar, salt and dry yeast. So let's start our tingmo today. The first ingredient is maida, two cups of refined flour, there you go. A teaspoon of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, maybe less, and our final ingredient about half a teaspoon of dry yeast. So it's a good idea to mix all your dry ingredients together. Uh, it ensures that all the ingredients are there all over the place. There's no concentration of either salt or sugar or dry yeast. Mix them up well and then slowly make a mountain. And in the mountain, we start with a well. And there our well is ready. For the Tingmo, we need warm water. Warm water is good because we have yeast, about one and a half cups of warm water. And slowly start sliding the maida towards the well. Now we can start making the dough since the water has escaped out of the well. This is a nice Indian messy way of making bread. So it's a soft dough, not too hard, uh, not too wet either. Just a little bit of kneading at this stage. You can actually make music, a good background score with this. So my dough is ready and now I need to give it an oil bath. So I'll just take a little bit of oil just to soothe the dough after all that beating. Just enough to make the dough glisten like it's got sweat all over it and then it goes for proofing uh, it'll probably get double in size which is a good thing the bigger it gets the better our tingmo is going to be it'll have to proof for an hour for it to really rise up for uh, to double its size and then we can start rolling the dough Hi, what are you doing i'm making a puzzle wow you look forward to having the bread? Yeah. Yeah? Good job. Do you think this will fit somewhere? Yes. It does? Awesome. But you're looking for Russia. I think you have most of Russia ready. Only that part is missing somewhere. This is United States of Russia. Oh, United States of Russia. Separately. <laughs> 
What are you eating? I'm eating long because there's a long wait. What about this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it can eat. Awesome. So we have the whole of Europe. Not Eastern whole. Europe. Look here. Some parts of Europe more left. Okay. It's been more than an hour and it's time for me to check my door. And this is just wow. Look at the way it's swollen up. It looks amazing, soft and supple and I can smell the yeast. So I'll just dust the granite a bit before I take out my dough. It's nice and supple and easily coming off the vessel. Also because there was oil in it. Now there is a round of kneading that is required in the tingmo just to stretch out the gluten in the bread which is really expanded and made it nice and supple. One of the translations of tingmo in Tibetan is cloud. So this is a cloudy, soft, fluffy and really light bread which is quite easy on the eye and of course it's amazing tasting. So there's this repetitive motion of folding and kneading which is really good for the dough and it'll show in your final result. The, the kneading is over and now we are ready to roll. So the trick is to make a square of the dough, uh, more like a rectangle and just press it with your hands first. Just stretch it so that there are four corners to it. Just a little bit of dusting with dry flour and we are ready to roll. So you have to essentially roll it in two directions. One is sideways and the other is up and down. The thickness that we need is about that of a roti. This is the most tiring part of it though, but it's good exercise, especially if you're in lockdown. I think we're almost done. We have the shape. It's not a perfect rectangle, but still it will do. And now is the time to apply oil on it. Make sure your nails don't dig into it. And there you go. The whole flattened rolled dough is covered in oil. And now comes a very interesting part of the process where we fold the dough. So make sure you have, you know that the dough is divided into two parts. And now we fold it like a folder or a file, two sides. So we have folded it once and now once, once more. There you go. This part of the Tingmo process is almost like making a puff pastry where you fold in the fat between the layers of the dough. There we have it. A nice strip. Make sure you flatten it a bit so the layers sort of stick together. Not too much, but just enough. And now comes the cutting part. So I make four equal portions of this long rectangular band. One, just mark it out first. 
and cut later. So I think I have four equal portions. So make a cut here and another cut here. Now each portion we need to make six cuts more. So each of these four sections has to be divided into six sections. Really thin strands. One, two, three, four, five, and six is automatically cut. And similarly with the next one, six equal portions. Doesn't matter if they're not equal. And this is the most exciting and artistic part of the journey. So what I need to do is take three strips together and lay them on top of the other three strips. So we have three plus three, six of them. Hold the ends together and just stretch it a bit. Gently, gently, and then swirl them. Give them a swirl like this. Stretch and swirl. And then you can fold it. This is how you fold a dingo. So after folding, we put it in the bamboo steamer. There you go. So there's my double boiler or my bain mari or my steamer and uh, it's really boiling you can see the steam rising out of it and it's ready to take the tingmo in and now neatly I will lower down my tingmo in the boiler there you go and the lid and the lid of the boiler. Now this will cook for exactly 15 minutes and then we are good to go. So my 15 minutes are over and it's time to check my tingmo. And there you have it, my lovely tingmo. It doesn't look cooked because of the color, but it is quite ready to be eaten. So the best thing about tingmo is that it goes with anything spicy or less spicy if you like that. So the last time I had tingmo, I had it with chola. But this time there's some homemade chicken curry. Kazuo, DC's made something really special. Wow, I'm the official taster. So what I've made is called tingmo. It's a kind of bread from Tibet and it's a steam. That's why it's so white in color. So I'd like you to taste it. Tell me how it is. Yeah, okay. Wow, the best bread I've ever had. Oh, I love that. So as you can see, the texture inside, it's just like any other bread. It's nice and soft and so much like any other bread, but it is not baked in an oven. It's cooked in a steamer. Wow, let me have a bite too. Yeah. Mm. See, I don't eat you. I love it. Yeah. <laughs>